Hi, this is Lija here. In the last videos, we discussed the physical and chemical methods of gene transfer. Today, we are moving on to the biological methods. The main gene transfer methods using biological means are bacteriophagy and transduction. Bacteriophagy is a method of direct gene transfer using bacteria into the target cells, tissues, organs, or organs. The genes located on the plasmids of the transformed bacterial strains are delivered and expressed into the cells. The gene delivery may be intracellular or extracellular and it has a potential to express various plasmid encoded heterologous proteins like antigens, toxins, hormones, enzymes, etc. in different cell types. Strains that are invasive and having better cell-to-cell -cell spread are more efficient. In 1980, Schaffner described the transformation of cultured mammalian cells by fusion with plasmid laden protoplast of the bacterium E. coli. This technique was the first demonstration of gene transfer between bacterial and mammalian cells. But it can be regarded essentially as a chemical transfusion method because the transfer mechanism was passive, that is the cells were merely vehicles for the DNA and gene transfer was, was only achieved under highly artificial circumstances. The efficiency of transfection mediated gene transfer can be increased using endocrine receptors. They are transmembrane surface receptors present on the mammalian cell surface. Another method called lipofectomy mediated bacteriofection has also been employed for enhancing the gene transfer efficiency in E. coli strains, particularly in the transfer of large intact DNA for gene expression. This method is also effective on various widely used bacterial vectors. Next is the transduction method. This method involves the introduction of genes into host cells genome using viruses as carriers. The viruses are used in gene transfer due to the efficiency of viruses to deliver their nucleic acids into cells and its high level of replication and gene expression. The foreign gene is packaged into the virus particles to enter the host cell. The entry of virus particle containing the candidate gene sequence into the cell and then to the nuclear genome is a receptor mediated process. The vector genome undergoes complex processes ending up with double stranded DNA depending on the vector that can persist as an episode or integrate into the host genome followed by the expression of the candidate gene. Viruses used for somatic gene transfer include retrovirus, lentivirus, adenovirus, adeno-associated virus and herpex simplex virus. Retroviruses are enveloped viruses which carry a simple RNA genome containing only three open reading frames encoding GAG, pole and envelope. Retroviruses use viral enzymes and cellular transcription machinery to copy their own genome and integrate it into the host chromosome of actively dividing cells. When a recombinant retrovirus is generated, it is deleted of the GAC pole and NVG and instead carries an expression cassette encoding the transgene of interest. Thus, after integration of DNA into the genome, no viral replication occurs, just transgene expression. It should be noted that an advantage of retroviruses in transducing dividing cells is that due to the integration process the viral genome will be maintained in all daughter cells. There are some drawbacks for this retrovirus system. These include retrovirus inability to transfect non-dividing cells like muscle, brain, lung, liver cells and its random integration of its genome with associated risk of insertional mutagenesis problems with its production of high titers, its limited capacity for therapeutic gene and possibility for the generation of new recombinant replication competent viruses, that is wild type of retrovirus. Recently, another subgroup of retrovirus 
lentiviruses has been considered as a promising tool in gene transfer. They share all the standard properties of retrovirus, but in addition, they have the capacity to transduce non-dividing cells. On the other hand, linear double-stranded DNA viruses called adenoviruses are also able to infect both dividing and non-dividing cells. This makes them attractive for gene transfer applications together with the fact that they can be produced as high viral titers. However, they do not integrate into the host cell genome and this gene expression following adenoviral gene transfer is short-lived. Also, there is a problem with potential immune response of the patients which leads to the elimination of therapeutic antigenic cells. This is a brief outline of the different biological gene transfer vehicles. The tissue tropism of the vectors is defined by several criteria. First and arguably most important is the distribution of the cellular receptors for the virus itself. Additional steps which can impact the ability of the virus to successfully transduce the target cells are the intracellular trafficking of the virus which has to not only escape the endosome to enter the cytoplasm but also enter the nucleus itself and whether or not the target cell is dividing. This is all about the biological methods of gene transfer. Non-viral gene transfer agents offer several potential advantages over recombinant viruses. They are non-infectious, relatively non-immunogenic, have low acute toxicity, can accommodate a large DNA plasmid and may be produced simply on a large scale. But they are limited by their lower gene e transfer efficiency than viruses and transient gene expression. Regardless of the delivery method, gene transfer into animal cells must accomplish three distinct goals. First, the exogenous genetic material must be transported across the cell membrane. Such transfer is independent of the nature of the genetic material, which is inert and passive at this stage. In physical transfer methods, transport across the membrane is achieved by direct transfer. For example, in micro-injection or particle bombardment, where the membrane is breached during delivery or in electroporation where transient holes are formed through which DNA and RNA can diffuse. In other delivery methods, the nucleic acid must form some sort of complex which binds to the cell surface before internalization. For example, in chemical transfection methods, the complex is formed between nucleic acid and a synthetic compound while in transduction methods the complex comprises nucleic acid packaged inside a viral capsid. Once across the cell membrane, the genetic material must be released in the cell and transported to its site of expression or activity. Again, the nucleic acid is passive at this stage. In most transfection methods, DNA or RNA complexes are deposited in the cytoplasm, either directly under the plasma membrane or deeper in the cytosol following escape from the endosomal vesicle. DNA must be transported to the nucleus, a process which depends on the cell's poorly understood intrinsic DNA trafficking system, while RNA can function directly in the cytoplasm. In methods such as particle bombardment or micro-injection, it is possible to deliver DNA directly into the nucleus, so intrinsic transport pathways are not required there. Many viruses also deliver their nucleic acid cargo into the nucleus as part of the infection cycle, often after integration with cell surface receptors and either internalization with endosomes or direct fusion with the plasma membrane. In the final stage of gene transfer, the exogenous genetic material must be activated that is released from its complex and rendered competent for expression and interaction with the host gene. This is all about the gene transfer techniques. Thank you for watching this video. Please share and subscribe.